You probably saw those low-res experiments with DLSS, and usually they are performed with very capable GPUs. I wonder if this technology could be helpful for low-end cards, because in theory it sounds good. Just drop the resolution beyond what is normally reasonable, let upscaling do its magic and enjoy high frame rate in demanding games. My first attempt was to test this theory on the old GTX 660, but unfortunately that card doesn't fully support DirectX 12, so a lot of modern games just refuse to run. And as the next contender I decided to bring the GT 1030, as probably the slowest modern GPU. I should put modern in big air quotes though, because Nvidia just released the last driver update for 10 series cards, and ending their support. But still, this one knows what to do with DirectX 12 instructions, unlike its predecessors. Keep in mind that this card was released to play Dota and Overwatch for 80 bucks in 2017, so today's games are pure torture for this little guy. I'm using the 1030 with GDDR5 memory, of course. There was also DDR4 option released later, but that just cripples its performance through slow memory bandwidth for no reason and at the same price. The GPU core itself is the same there. Let's start with Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 at the lowest settings with native Full HD resolution with no upscaling at first. And unsurprisingly, the game struggles to run. Frame rate is just between 5 and 10 frames per second. The only built-in upscaling option here is FSR 3.1, so let's start right away with performance mode. And with that we are getting almost 2 times more frames, now it's around 15 fps on the counter. But what's good is that the image itself did not become significantly blurrier. And the frame time graph is smooth, meaning there are no jitters or stutters. It feels surprisingly responsive for what it is. But let's try to squeeze even more performance from this poor GPU and drop the resolution to 720p. Now it's reconstructing the image from 360p base, and it's noticeable. Although there is even some free space in graphics card memory, about 400 megabytes actually, the FPS increase is not that significant. Now we have 22 on average, but with very, very soft visuals. Space Marine 2 greets us with 8 FPS in the main menu, which is encouraging. And in the game itself, with the lowest settings but with native Full HD resolution, the counter shows about 6. And look at those explosions. You can count every pixel they are made of. All 5 of them. Ok, let's go straight to performance mode with FSR. And well, it's not much better visually, but overall it feels much smoother and more responsive now. You can actually charge for the Emperor for a very slow and fuzzy one. But still, frame times are very steady, and I might call it playable experience if we can get a couple more frames per second. Just something above 20. Unfortunately, even if we drop the resolution to 720p, or even to 800 by 600 it wouldn't give us any additional gains. At this point you barely can recognize your brothers, and everything else is lost in a shroud of heresy. Alan Wake 2 takes us to the whole new dimension. Now we're getting not frames per second, but seconds per frame. Ultra performance upscaling technically gives us an immense gain in terms of percentages, but that translates to just 3 FPS. 6 if we drop base resolution to 240p. And that looks trippy. It is definitely an experience. Great that it works, but let's move on. Cyberpunk. Finally we are getting some frames. Not much, but something. 12 every second on average. And with ultra performance with FSR 2.1 the screen is not turning black, which is a significant improvement compared to GTX 660. There is about 8 FPS gain, but the game looks much fuzzier now. With FSR 3 in performance visuals are much sharper, but the frame rate overall is couple of FPS lower. Intel's XCSS in performance gives us even more sharpness, but the frame rate is even lower now than what it was with native resolution. Alright, let's check something a bit more appropriate for this type of GPU. CS2 goes up to 100 frames per second with dips around 60. Big numbers, much wow. But surprisingly, built-in upscaler doesn't change much even in performance mode. I still got drops when there is a fire or smoke on the screen, and the maximum frame rate still was around 100, 110 with rare peaks to 120. GTA 5 Enhanced even at the lowest settings it requires around 3 gigs of video memory, and with that kind of settings you lose all the enhanced advantages. The game looks very undercooked, even for PlayStation 3 standards. It is very empty with low population density and variety, and textures are switched to low res not that far from you. All of that for only 30 to 40 frames per second. FSR 1 in performance mode adds a ton of blur, but not that many new frames. Yes, it is 53 on average now, sometimes you can see 60, and it might look fine on your phone, but on the computer screen, no, it's not a pleasant experience. And again, FSR 3 is much sharper. 
but the frame rate is not that different from native resolution. So, in conclusion, upscaling can do wonders. It can double the performance or reconstruct an image from a very poor base, but you need some foundation for that. So if you want to make stable 60 frames per second from 45 for example, or 120 from 100, maybe it can help to bump 25 to solid 30. But if your card struggles to run the game at the low settings with 20 FPS, then you might hit a boundary. There is a point after which you stop getting any gains, no matter how low you drop the base resolution. And that is very interesting. At least to me. I hope it was interesting for you as well. Now, go look at something in 4K to restore your vision and see you in the next one. Bye.